South Africa agency needs an economic strategy. And we agree, I think we agree we're in trouble. The time to take decisive action, irrespective of upcoming elections, is now. Whilst I fully support a measured, well-defined process to right the scandalous wrongs of the apartheid past, our populistic, general and vague, confusing, conflicting announcements about the expropriation of land is dangerous, it's a dangerous addition to the cocktail of job losses, a shrinking economy, and social instability. Short-term political gains prop up by popular slogans, and one must say empty slogans, with short election horizons in mind, always have negative long-term ramifications. Real leadership, which is what is required now in this country, real leadership signifies that you should be willing to take short and medium decisions that are unpopular, but will benefit your country and its people in the long term by creating policy stability. A positive view from local and global investors and incentives for local entrepreneurs to take risks. I welcome in this regard, initiated by the presidency to put the message out there that growth of the public sector, apparently 2% above inflation, is unsustainable. But the problem, ladies and gentlemen, is that I am not very certain if the presidency or the president agrees with the Minister of Public Administration on this issue. It looks like we're trying to avoid retrenchment. It has become a swear word. And when the unions back at us, we buckle up. We run away. It's not correct. The ANC is a ruling party, it must rule, it must govern in consultation with the masses and not be looking over its shoulders. Enough has been said about the sorry state of our state-owned enterprises. As they are, they are an embarrassment to our economic liberation, our struggle, and the national democratic revolution, a very serious embarrassment. In general terms, there are currently only two winners, namely, the legal profession, the auditing firms thriving on litigation and other activities from mismanagement, and some corrupt entrepreneurs who find willing partners in decision makers at the SOEs. In my own modest view of our current situation, I would like to see the following occurrences going forward before someone accusing me of lamenting without proposing, putting clear proposals. I would like to see the following happening. A policy stability that is devoid from incoherent and populistic vague statements. Strengthened economic and patriotic pact between government, business and labor. We should not have government that thinks business is the enemy. I think the three are partners, and one should add civil society. Large-scale deregulation of the small business sector, large-scale deregulation of all manufacturing sectors, private-public sector partnership to replace the current wholly owned state companies. And if you think I don't want to, I want, I want to be vague about this matter. I believe that uh, there needs to be private sector inter intervention in bodies such as SAA, ESCOM can list, so that this joint investment and joint management of these entities can no longer be that only the state will own these entities. And we're not saying the state should get out. We say the state must invite private sector to participate. You know. A total revamp of the National Prosecuting Agency so that South Africans and foreigners can take pride in the stability of our justice environment. I recently wrote a confidential letter to the president in this regard. I won't disclose what I said, but I made a concrete proposal about on how the executive should distance itself from appointing the next head of NPA. So it must be done the same way as the public protector. 
in Parliament by all political parties and remain neutral. Improved, detailed and specific communication with the South African nation and the global community regarding expropriation of land. Massive efforts to make South Africa safer. The numbers which have been counted by the Minister of Police himself in the various categories of crimes, murder, rape and others are staggering. South Africa is seen from the outside world as a country of crime. We cannot have such an image. Multi-part initiatives around shared national agenda should, as such, inform economic growth, the justice system and reconciliation. A total clamp down on corruption, inclusive of improving the whistleblower system. If you think about this, we're making the right noises about fighting corruption. But there is not one senior casualty of the culprits. And until we hang one of the culprits, no one will take words seriously. People are going to say, it's the same, it's the same, they're making threats, switch sounding for elections. We need to, to punish the most senior as examples. Then everybody will listen. Before I finish, let me state that I have heard about leaders being captured in a coastal hotel while apparently plotting against their own elected leaders. I have only heard about this. As a person who has been accused of plotting in the past, two plots, <laughs> I wish to state I am supportive of specific kind of plot. Such a plot would be bring together all well-meaning South Africans in an all-out effort to fix our economy so that we all benefit from a thriving economy that creates jobs. That plot I'll join. The only plot that we should be meeting about and planning for is a better life for all. We are all we are proud, a proud nation that has a unique opportunity to move away from the darkness that engulfed us in the last decade. Let us seize the opportunity as black and white people and as a governing and opposition parties to finally bring, bring liberation, peace and economic stability and growth to our country. And I want to say in conclusion, Mr. CFO and CEO, change cannot wait.